I would like to introduce to you Mr. Olim Paladian. He is the CEO of Europa, the premier aluminum exclusion corporation in Greece. During the past 22 years, he has managed industrial corporations, venture capital funds, and technology companies in Europe and the United States. Before uh, joining Europa, he was the CEO of HERCO, which under his leadership became the most efficient clean tech corporation of its time in Southeast Europe. He concurrently served as the investment director of Capital Connect, a pioneering venture capital fund. Previously, he founded and sold two technology companies in London and Hamburg. He frequently, he frequently speaks at universities and conferences. His TEDx talks and volunteer work with Upgrade Tourism gained international coverage. He studied in Boston and earned a bachelor's degree in management from Bentley and a CSS in business administration from Harvard. Please let's welcome Mr. Onik Palatian. Many of you came here to, to watch uh, Mr. Panayot TVs from Intel Talk, so I'm just one of be. I'm going to talk to you about upgrade tourism. How many know what upgrade tourism is? One, two, three hands. Wow, shameful. So after this, everybody's going to raise their hands. Upgrade tourism is a crazy idea and a simple idea. So two years ago, I received a phone call from a friend of mine that lives in Dubai. His name is Yorgos, Yorgos Kibukiotis. That's it. And he says, Onik, I, I have a pretty interesting idea. Let's promote Greece by placing a billboard in the middle of Manhattan in New York City. I said, what are you talking about? Are you crazy? What, what are you sing me in your sleep or something? How did you come up with this idea? He says, listen, it's a pretty good idea. I even have the expert. Uh, Stathis. He's an expert in uh, search engines, in uh, social media, in anything that has to do with the internet. And we're going to be able to promote Greece very, very... Uh, with, with passion and uh, very good results. So, for every idea, there's a lot of counter-arguments, and that's true for any startup situation. In our case, we don't know about tourism. The three of us have absolutely no idea about tourism. I mean, we know how to go to Mykonos for holidays, but that's pretty much it. We cannot take sponsors, so we couldn't go to Vodafone, for example, and say, or Intel, uh, and say, please give us $15,000 to promote Greece into the US because that would defeat the purpose. No one gets paid, and that is usually uh, a limiting factor to many. Experts said, then Gimete, the experts that usually say Gimete, said, guys, you're going to damage uh, the branding of Greece. You're going to create something that's not up to par. Don't do it. We might disagree because anytime you enter into a venture, you are entering into the unknown. And there's always conflict between people. There's different uh, ideas. And this usually brings problems. Greece might be on strike when our billboard is, is there. Uh, which, you know, we were experiencing all these strikes of all the previous time, and we really thought this would be a huge problem. It might be kitsch, so we might create a visual to place on a billboard in Manhattan that would be totally kitsch and even damage uh, the brand. And at the same time, it cannot look like EOT or the Greek National Tourism Organization created it. It has to look different. How much impact can a simple billboard on a side street have? How many tourists will it bring? What if we're not able to gather the $15,000, which is the absolute minimum to do such a promotion? We would either have to you know, disgrace ourselves 
or put the money out of our own pockets. It's Christmas. Shouldn't we be playing poker or something? That was Christmas two years ago. So, because we're crazy enough, we decided to run a little video to ask for people for the funds. This is it. Yes, yes. my name is Omik. Yorgos Tapis. This video is about a crowdfunding project. It's an advertising campaign in New York City to promote tourism in Greece. The economic situation in Greece is really bad. Many people are losing their jobs on a daily basis. Many are forced to migrate out of the country. And even the suicide rates in some parts of the country have hit the roof. Governments are trying to find solutions. But we as individuals should not wait. We need to help ourselves. We chose tourism because it's the heavy industry of Greece. The income from tourism is then widespread around the economy. Thousands of tourists come to Greece from America every year. But there's massive potential for many more to come. This is a grassroots campaign with no involvement from government where Greeks and their friends come together to help Greece. Our team is made up of individuals with day jobs working on this project on their spare time to help change the future of their country. We need to collect at least $15,000. $15,000 will enable us to run a campaign in New York City. And we will amplify that campaign by earning far wider media coverage. This is to prove that resilience, teamwork, and innovation are still part of the Greek DNA. Please contribute to this crowdfunding project by donating an amount you feel is right for you. And ask your friends to contribute too, especially anyone you know who's visited Greece or you think would like to visit Greece. Become part of the revival of the Greek economy and the Greek spirit. You can help us. Thank you very much. So this was our little homemade video. And uh, we circulated this all over the social media. And you may have noticed on the video, there's a little artwork of how this yellow space is on the little side street of Manhattan that people would not really pass by. It was the cheapest one we would find. But it was more of a symbolic gesture that people could actually do it. So as soon as we circulated, this video, strange things have started to happen. A Greek friend of mine said, my uncle works for the biggest billboard company in New York. So for the same amount of money, they're willing to offer you this space in the most central place of New York City, which is Times Square. 57 million people pass by Times Square each year. So for a month, your message will appear instead of a back alley at the most central place. And not only that, it will not be a static billboard. It's more like a large screen TV, so it could be an animated message, a little video. And that will automatically quadruple the value uh, of the $15,000 that we had to gather. So we knew that this was worth uh, four times that, uh, and it all happened with the magic of social media, just by sharing the idea around. And it happened. This was the little animated video that was created.
little message was playing uh, for 30 days in uh, Times Square. Uh, you may have noticed that uh, it is a distinctive mosaic of the faces of the people that contributed the money. We tried to find gimmicks of how to persuade people to donate uh, from uh, one dollar uh, upwards. And uh, we said, uh, if you contribute, your face is going to be in the middle of Times Square. So what, what a better way of enticing people to, to join up. And we found an artist that specializes in this kind of technique. His name is Haris Tsevis. Uh, he's, of course, Greek, who voluntarily uh, helped create this non-kitsch, we hope, uh, uh, art. And eight weeks after this was just an idea during Christmas, here is uh, part of the team. I couldn't make it. I was, I was watching all of this uh, from my living room in Athens while some uh, actually traveled. The girls traveled from Dubai and uh, Elena too, and Harris is there in the middle. Uh, these two ladies I still haven't met. Uh, they come from Boston and New York, and they work for advertising and PR. And uh, this is Thanos, who worked at the time for Sky, uh, Thanos Imadis. He was the Sky reporter that was following the story, and it was, they wanted to, uh, both Earth and Sky reported live from the launch. Again, all of this through social media. They found out about it, they thought it was very, very interesting. Another very interesting fact is that the 27 volunteers that helped make this happen. We have actually never all, all of us met. Uh, we used to meet different people when, uh, in this case, Kathy Merni were asking us to come and take a photo shoot to, to introduce us, and whoever could make it, because there's, you know, when people live in three continents and volunteer, uh, it's not easy to gather everybody together. Um, this is the only photograph that the three original uh, initiators, uh, so it's uh, Yoros, Stathis and myself are in the same picture. Uh, and it happened a year after. So this gathered a lot of attention. Why did it gather so much attention? Because it was a grassroots campaign from simple people with no ties to tourism, with no ties to big companies, and that automatically grew attention from places, you know, like, okay, so the BBC and, uh, you know, New York Times, but also Hindustan Times and uh, Gulf News. Uh, so in countries that we, you know, there's a strong uh, Greek diaspora, if you will, uh, you know, Brazil and India do not have a huge uh, Greek diaspora, but still, they were interested in it made international news. And, uh, of course, the big win was uh, CNN that ran this story. Above the hustle and bustle of Times Square sits one of New York City's most unique new billboards, urging the world to come to Greece. Unlike slashy tourism campaigns with big budgets, you guys definitely know how to enjoy yourselves. Like this one, financed by the Greek government, this billboard was paid for out of the pockets of Greek citizens themselves. We wanted to do something uh, regardless of uh, the government and regardless of companies. It had to be by the people. Up Greek tourism organizers raised $20,000 to keep their ad up and running for a month. They raised the cash through crowdfunding site Loudsauce. Hundreds of people made small donations. Organizers made their plea via this video appeal. Governments are trying to find solutions, but we as individuals should not wait. We need to help ourselves. Thousands of tourists come to Greece from America every year, but there's massive potential for many more to come. Those who did donate money were urged to send in a picture of themselves, and those pictures were used to help create the distinctive mosaic of images on the billboard. Greece, hard hit by a severe economic downturn and violent anti-government protests, might not seem like a desirable spot for travelers right now. Indeed, Greek officials fear tourism revenues will fall 5% this year. But attracting visitors will be critical for the future of Greece. Some 15% of the country's GDP comes from tourism. It employs about a fifth of the Greek workforce. 
People we talked to in Times Square say the billboard could entice them to come. It made it seem like it'd be a really fun place to go. Threw my attention to thinking about it. And there's one other selling point. Organizers say this summer, visitors will be welcomed with open arms. I think because of the crisis, the Greek people have become even more hospitable and are more appreciative of uh, the tourists that come in the country. The Greek American Gold Bar Society. In a city where Greek pride always runs high, up Greek tourism is hoping to raise it sky high. Felicia Taylor, CNN, New York. You can imagine how surprised we were when we found out that CNN is interested. And, uh, you know, these things you don't believe until they, you actually witness them on, on uh, television. Uh, and that <coughs> catapulted the success of this little crazy idea. Because anybody will tell you that if you try to invest money into advertising, you will uh, you know, uh, hope that you will get at least your money back or double. In this case, in the first campaign, we managed to uh, multiply the original funds by 25 times because of all this publicity, all this free publicity that would only happen because it is a volunteer's project. How did this project change my life? I experienced that, the power of volunteerism. And it's not just this happy, fuzzy feeling of people joining around and hold hands and, you know, do something that's for a noble cause. 1.1 million dollars created out of thin air, effectively. 12 million people around the world saw this campaign out of, again, nothing. And if it was sponsored by a big organization, none of this would have happened. I gave time and received inspiration. Inspiration from people that do actually work and are passionate and give their time and money sometimes because flying from uh, Dubai to New York is not cheap. And they do it for the power of something else, which is their country in this case, which is we want to help and we do not have an ulterior motive, and that's very powerful. And people and, and experiencing the, the energy, because when you give something and you're not getting anything in return, I mean monetary-wise, it's much, much more powerful. You do it 100% with passion, and uh, the result is visible. Uh, the other thing is our secret hopes materialized. We were hoping that we would get copied and we did. So this idea got copied by three Greek Americans living in uh, Washington, D.C who approached me and said, we love this idea. We have the space that is owned by uh, a Greek that's willing to give it to us for a very good uh, price, for a bargain. Uh, we need to run the campaign. We helped them out and the campaign running in Washington. So the second upgrade tourism campaign. And then we got COVID again. Again, three ladies, which I still have not met out of London. Nobody's involved in tourism again, let me say that, so no motives. Uh, said, we will take on and we need your help to do the exact same project in London. In, in this case, uh, in the equivalent of, uh, of what it's uh, the New York Times Square. Uh, Piccadilly Circus, the most central place in, in London. And this is how it, it appeared, again, uh, much to our uh, surprise. So I urge you not just to perform clicktivism, so the, you know, being activists of the click and the share and the retweet. We need to go beyond that, because we can.
if 27 volunteers from three continents that still haven't met each other are doing this for Greece, anything is possible. We shouldn't wait for others or blame others. We have great ideas. We have the power to change our world. Thank you very much. I'm open for uh, questions. If yes. Hello. Thank you for this presentation. I really enjoyed it. I saw the other day in line an image that presented in a humoristic manner the stereotypes of the USA citizens about the rest of the world. And there was this map, and above Greece there was the phrase cheap hotels. I want to ask, do we need a similar campaign now that we have the awareness about the third in Greece so as to change this perception from cheap hotels to something else? Thank you. Well, that's a good question, and again, uh, uh, no expert, I've been involved in aluminium and before in venture capital, nothing to do with tourism, nothing to do with branding. Uh, one of the arguments of the people that told us don't do it, uh, expert, the expert that told us don't do it, was, okay, the tourists will come to Greece, but we cannot offer the quality of service and the quality of the experience that we need to offer. We need to first rebrand Greeks, change their psyche, change their culture, blah, blah, blah. I said, what are you talking about? We're talking about a simple campaign to, pr to promote our country. I'm not here to change Greeks. I mean, Greeks can do whatever they want. You know, we are a hospitable nation. We do have uh, cheap hotels, but we also have lots of five-star hotels that we invest into heavily, to the best of my knowledge. Uh, we can, it's pretty much to the, the point I said earlier. There is 20 good reasons why not to do something. And that's the case for any startup situation. So when you're facing uh, the unknown, you will find reasons not to do it. But you need to be crazy enough to cross the bridge and say, I'll do it anyway. You know, what's the worst thing that can happen? I'll disgrace myself. Fine. So let them come to Greece and let them experience the taxi driver that's not very polite and the hotel staff that's not very polite. In my experience in the past year, in the past three years, I've seen a dramatic change in the way we treat each other and the way we treat tourists. We're much more polite and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking about only five-star hotels, I'm, not, I'm talking about every hotel because we want and we appreciate that this is a way for us to exit from the crisis that we're in. I don't know if I respond to the question. Hello again. Uh, I'm George Magyarian, the head of the International Tourism and Hospitality Management Department, so I have a vested interest in this. Um, I was very interested in the campaign. I have to admit I have heard about it, but not gone to, not, not delved into it very much. I was interested to find out when this became you know, a big topic of conversation, which it did. Uh, did you get any contact from the official authorities of uh, you know, Greek marketing, destination marketing? GNTO or Ministry of Tourism to get synergies or any help? Um, we did. Initially, they were hesitant. They were, uh, I don't follow change. I don't watch TV. I don't know what was happening. But it was kind of the old regime uh, because we're talking about uh, you know two years ago. Um, they approached us. First of all, we sent a letter stating we're going to have this campaign, but at the same time we don't want anything from you, so that you know. Uh, they showed up in New York City at the initial uh, campaign. Um, they were very polite. They didn't try to get any publicity for themselves or any credit for themselves. Um, so they didn't help and they didn't... Exactly. 
Uh, lately, as in very recently, uh, because there have been changes in the in the ministry, and there is also organizations that try to help uh, find synergies between all these little uh, smaller groups of people that try to help Greece. Uh, there's uh, a meeting arranged for, for next month to all come together for a brainstorm session, if you will. But that's it. Even if the government had tried to help, we would have opposed it because it, we would lose our independence. And by being independent is how you achieve spectacular results. If you were just another government campaign, nobody cares. <laughs> well, a couple of days ago, we had another speaker who is again an entrepreneur and uh, he has a uh, of very startup as I know that you've done yourself. And he was talking about optimism. The, the fact that you wake up in the morning and you're still crazy, I think that this is a quality that most of our students have been deprived of because of the crisis. And I think that they're not very optimistic. So, what is your message to young people in case of uh, going ahead and starting something new? Great question. First of all, how many of you watch the news on television? Okay, if there's one thing that you can keep from today from my speech is don't watch the news. If you want to if you want to, you know, play a DVD or download something from the internet and play a movie or a series, do it. But no news. If you want to get informed of what's going on, get on the internet and <coughs> dig in. I'm sure the news is there. Uh, a lot of the misery that comes to not only the young uh, generation but also the older generation comes from the news. And I was watching the news, and especially during the Lehman Brothers crisis, I, I was the kind of person that was watching CNBC for two hours every night to see what's going on. And then I was watching Sky News. I'm not trying to advertise here, because I just said the opposite. I was watching Sky News, the Greek Sky TV channel. And uh, we are not broadcasting. Exactly. Uh, so I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> so a friend of mine said on, uh, on Facebook, wrote a message. I'm going to stop watching Babis Papa Dimitriou at night because it kills my sexuality. <laughs> <laughs> and it clicks. I mean, sometimes it's a simple thing that clicks. I love Babis Papa Dimitriou. I think it's fantastic. But it kills your sexuality. I mean, so you switch it off. And you can go to Sky and their internet site, on their you know, radio even. But the news is performed in a way that totally kills optimism. Because you hear nine negative things and, you know, half of the news that it's semi-positive. And that's not the way to live our world, our lives. Um, number two advice to young people is you have nothing to lose. I mean, okay, you get into, you know, you create a company, you know, a little startup, or you take a risk. What do you have to lose? Absolutely nothing. I mean, if you have kids and uh, family, you have, you can lose, you know, getting paid and uh, the ability to go to the supermarket and buy some food. But uh, if you're young, you have absolutely nothing to lose, so you can take more risk. Those are my little two cents. Okay. So thank you, Mr. Palapia. Thank you very much.